tools and the workflows is under NDA, but I saw the opportunity to share the processes and what I did in different stages of a project lifecycle. The idea was that we already speak about the work done in the resume, so I will present it visually, just expanding on those bullet points and not showing the company's IP. That sounds smart enough already, right? It's abstracting it. It's showcasing something which is general, which doesn't really have any IP to it. So let's see exactly how Archdeep did that. And this portfolio, as the others, come from Design Squad community. If you're new to this or you don't know what it is, make sure to join. There's definitely a link down below in the description where people can meet like-minded designers, researchers, strategists, product people, or techies. There's a lot in it. And I think it's one of the biggest Discord communities for product design and research out there. So why not? Anyhow, what I'm going to review today, though, is a portfolio from Arshdeep. Arshdeep is a product designer with management and leadership experience. He helped scale two startups, currently upgrading their skills in post-grad diploma, IT project management, and looking for full-time roles in Canada specifically. During my time with a startup, I created more than 500 screens for their internal dashboards with multiple users. I contributed from inception of user stories to the final mockups. So let's see exactly how Arshdeep did that. The project entails creating a white label SaaS platform wearable designed for higher, higher education institutes. Wearable serves as a global hub connecting students, employers and institutions to unlock opportunities worldwide. Now, I'm just going to quickly go and Google wearable. OK, so wearable is a wearable is actually a brand. It's not necessarily feedback for RHD, but for everyone else, because sometimes when you create a white label tool, you can rebrand it. You can literally say that this make it look different, especially if there's IP. You can abstract and blur things out. You can rebrand the actual product and name it something else, create a new brand and just be explicit that you did it. It's simply taking away from the actual brand and making it the actual project and displaying is just as a project not related to a brand. Specific details of the work undertaken cannot be disclosed. However, this case study will focus on methodologies and approach. Perfect. Except I would probably make that first thing somewhere. The actual positioning or where you put that message it doesn't really matter, but I at least like that you put that and made it explicit. I would maybe even make it stand out more visually. Small thing, cosmetic thing, but so it cannot be missed basically, you know, because again, hiring managers are going to be like, okay, okay, what is this? What am I looking at? Uh, this headline, that headline, what does that say? Connecting and mapping the details very quickly. So make it easier for them so they don't miss that block out. And again, they're not going to read it as a book. They're going to skim it and then look into the detail and, and look deeper. Physician health lead product designers. Uh, I think you should just say lead product designer because that higher educational portal is all redundant. We know exactly what it is. Tools, irrelevant. And why I say it's irrelevant because everybody's using those tools. It's redundant. Tell me if you use any design systems. Tell me to what extent. Tell me how big is the design system. Tell me if you need it to maybe do some branding. Tell me something technical instead of just giving me a logo of the tool. Because again, they don't really matter. Everybody knows them or should know them. You might be a pro in Figma, but who the hell cares? UX is not the tool. Project timeline, uh, contribute lead different phases of the startup. I like that you are being explicit that, okay, this is three blocks and that's about it. Fair enough, not gonna even question that, that's great. But the timeframes would be interesting to know as well, because this could be four weeks or could be four months or could be two years or could be 10 years you spend doing it. That would be very interesting to understand. And it's gonna position the project and give context necessary to proceed and frame it. Product vision, Vable is pioneering platform that unites students, employers, academic institution, while fostering innovation, resilience, things of that nature. And this is fair enough, but I would want it to be expressed visually, maybe. Could you show it in some sort of visual ways? Could you give a storyboard, perhaps, of what happens? In product design and UX strategy and product strategy generally, Visioneering or vision typing, it unlocks so many ideas and clearly showcases exactly what's different about it because I can still tell all of this vision 
it makes sense to you or maybe wearable, but it doesn't make sense to me just yet. I would need to kind of look at it, go back and forth. We could simplify it and make it easier for anyone. So there's quite a few different users, uh, higher end admins, employer students, advisors, mentors, wearable admins. It doesn't give me enough but tells me about their needs in the abstracted way. You know, without giving me specifics, at least I know that Archdeep understands that they are different, that the segmentation was done, that there is some sort of thinking of how to approach them. So this is great. Of course, I would want to know more, but that's where Archdeep could be like, hey, do you want to find out more? Give me a ring. I would ask them in the interview of how they approach so many segments who were the primary, who were the secondary, to what extent, what was the phasing like? Maybe you had some sort of go-to-market strategy of where you approach certain segments first, then secondary, when there was some sort of strategy to that. That would be very curious to learn about. And I would ask, especially because Archdeep is senior, I would be quizzing them. As a senior, you kind of need to think about those themes and give me a good informed answer, kind of like of what would happen in a real project. Of course, not giving out what's under NDA. So you did research, service mapping, product strategy as part of that initial phase, quantitative and qualitative methodologies, service mapping. And as you can see, this is a good demo of how a hiring manager would view this. They would look at the bold and thing. Okay, this is what you did. Identification of features that align with our business goals and stakeholder needs. Fine, that's good enough. Again, it's so abstract, so it's hard to critique but that's a good example of what NDA case study could look like because you know I could critique them in the actual interview or find out more there. Product roadmap and backlog. After a product strategy development, realistic roadmap for the launch of a platform, prioritize product backlog, things of that nature, and you show the actual mockups of the things, the design phase, followed by information, da da da, and then hi. So all of this sounds very waterfally. That would be a bit of a yellow flag to me, or I would question that a lot because you kind of say, okay, this is so linear. And I said that bullet points are great for scanning, but for the story, they might not be. So you might want to consider how to merge it and say, again, I'm not going to solutionize it for you. And maybe you didn't do it, then that's fair enough. But if you did act iterative, agile approach, creating wireframe testing with the users and then creating high fidelity mockups or went back and forth, you should mention that. Don't just say we did lo-fi and then hi-fi and then we did something else. It's never that static in UX projects anyways. So you can be honest and say that you use different fidelity of approaches to create wireframes and mockups by learning from the users, especially because design is never that you take it away or it shouldn't be that you take it away, do it in isolation and then show up with the mockups, right? In the prototyping and feedback, you state prototypes were created for each persona to capture maximum feedback from all users. What is maximum feedback? That could mean so many different things. I have no idea what that means. It needs rephrasing at a minimum. Can you tell me that you interviewed all the segments equally so that everything is covered and you don't miss out or on something or something along those lines? Like it's abstracted in the wrong light in my head because that could mean anything. It could be faked, for example. Maybe that's what could go through hiring managers' mind until they know the details. How could you shed a bit more light or rephrase that? And then you have handover of design, which I think you could just merge into, again, bullet points, make it easier. But product reviews were undertaken with the CEO, CTO. I think you could just create a storyline for this, that you closely worked with CTO and CEO, and maybe this could have been the first thing as describing exactly that you worked with stakeholders and these were X, Y, Z. The handover of design doesn't really matter. Now, to me, from someone who has hired a lot of designers, when people mention handover, it usually means that it was limited contract or freelancing opportunity or was way too short. because. <laughs> UX continues. UX is done, but done enough. So you can continue and do more UX basically, right? So I would question that, like what happens next? I think you can make it a bit more punchy of how you finish your story here. Give me some results. Wearable, by the way, for everyone is a brand, right? Like as we saw, a lot of it is available online. Can you talk a bit about Delta from before and after? Even if you cannot give me specifics, what changed? Maybe user engagement improved. Maybe users saw improvements on some sort of UX factors. 
I don't know, usability, credibility, trust, something else improved on that. These are general and abstracted terms, but you can talk about it because it's a result of something you did for that company without giving IP. So you can tweak that story a, a whole lot, especially if you're involved in it and you deeply wear part of the team and things of that nature. You can capture a lot of that. And another thing to point out for Archdeep is give me a call to action. There's no more call to action. I don't want to view more of your case studies because to be honest, I see that Archdeep is confident in their messaging and probably has the experience. Again, it's to be C because it's NDA, it's abstracted. I need to talk to them. But I would, yeah, be like, let's talk. I'm going to invite you for an interview. Let's chat, basically. Let's find out if there's a match. But view more case study, it isn't that. And it's also, I thought it's clickable, but it's not. So it kind of leads to next or before. Add a big button saying, contact me now. Because you don't know which case study is going to make them think about talking to you. Make it this one. Make it any of them. Make sure that there is a big call to action here, which says, want to find out more? Give me a ring or email me or contact me now or something along those lines. And for everyone else, I just want to call out one thing and one thing which is super important. Get inspired from this because there is so much good stuff in here of how to abstract it and what you could show. But consider that this is N equals one case. It's one singular case. They know exactly what they can show and what they shouldn't show. Just don't make a mistake just copying what they've shown because you need to find out exactly what you can show. These are a lot of good messages at an abstracted terms level, but you should always double check. You could create a case study like that, a draft in a PDF and send it to a product manager or that CEO or CTO and say, hey, could I show this on my portfolio? I'm not giving away too much. I'm abstracting it. I'm not giving any IP. Is it okay with that message? Just asking them clearly. It's always a good idea to just double check it. And same applies for Archdeep. I would just say, hey, have you checked it? Um, if you did, happy days. It's great. And I like this approach again for abstracting and showing some things because you want to kind of invite for more conversation and actually any other case study. You want to, you know, start conversations. You want to kind of have that foot in the door so that the hiring manager would be like, yeah, I want to talk to them. And as per usual, check out my other videos on UX portfolio review. I'm going to leave at least one floating somewhere here. So click on it, watch it. It certainly helps. And on that note, I'll see you next time. case study one thing i need to call out and give feedback to archdeep and everyone else really archdeep's portfolio is pretty good it's clean it's effective it showcases all the different projects it has a work about linkedin resume links and things of that nature you know it's archdeep's decision to show those things and we have some information about it but here's the thing every time you go to a case study or every time you want to go back to work you're presented with this different typography being changed for no particular reason. Fancy, but quite poor usability, especially when the load time could be instant. That's one UX issue with that. And it's a meta issue as well. Of course, it might not prevent you from getting interviews, but if a hiring manager is considerate about accessibility or actual just general usability, the loading speeds, things of that nature, we might kind of be like, hmm, maybe Archdeep is not the right candidate. Keep it simple, basically. Don't go overboard motionizing everything or animating everything. And a small thing on that too is navigation should really show the active thing. For example, the first time I looked at the portfolio itself, I was like, am I on work or am I on about page? Which state is active? You should indicate that. That small things out of the way with a portfolio. Let's jump into the actual case study.